guys, Jessica Henry here. Just wanted to welcome you to my video and uh, explain a little bit about what I have going on here. I'm trying something a little different. Yesterday I did this uh, filming of this video. I painted these boats and had a lot of fun doing it, but it was kind of crowded, so I didn't do any talking during the filming. So today I'm going to do a voiceover on my video and kind of explain my process a little further. And I hope it's interesting. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much, guys. These are the colors that I normally use on my palette, whether I am working in the studio or out plein air painting. All right, so beginning the painting, this is an 11 by 14 canvas, and I have it all toned with just a, a real general um, burnt sienna ultramarine blue. And I took in the whole scene and I'm thinking about, um, you know, where I want to place the objects. I'm just using a simple dark mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, a little bit of Gamsol, and um, just mapping out kind of where I want the center of interest for the boats. That's sort of what my thought process is here. I have to work quickly on these boats because um, you'll see during the video here, they kind of float around and do their own thing there in the water. So I'm just sort of capturing exactly where I think they'd make an interesting balance and composition in here. So that's what I'm thinking about here, just sort of drawing them in place, thinking about size and placement and where they are in relation to the edge of the canvas. And um, just thinking about the reflections as they come down into the water, laying all that in. I'm just using a size 2 flat brush, keeping it really loose, and um, I'm not using an umbrella today. I probably should have because I was in direct sunlight, but you know, the color was fine. I think that it turned out alright. When I'm doing these filming, um, when I'm filming these little videos, I prefer not to have my canvas under shade because it's harder to see the colors. So I do have it in direct sunlight. And I'm thinking here, there's a, that dot comes down to the water and there's a platform down there, as you can see in the photo. And then um, there's that railing thing that goes up to the upper level. And I think that that's kind of interesting. I didn't want to get it too involved because it would be confusing and kind of congested. So I thought I would just keep that simple. And there were several big boats, but I didn't want them to crowd the scene and kind of overtake the little boats. So I just threw one in. It's kind of like the, the mom with the babies. <laughs> just getting the shape to where I feel it's fairly accurate. I also didn't want that boat to be a barrier because it kind of is would cut it in half and be a stopping point and I try to keep the eye flow throughout the whole canvas. So as I'm painting and I get the water behind the boat, I'm going to kind of lose that top edge of the boat, in, just sort of in value to the water. And I didn't feel that I needed very much of the sky and trees. The trees are going to provide sort of a darker background to support the foreground. Too much information back there would have drawn the eye. So I didn't want that to be really distracting. A lot of times I'll divide the canvas into two thirds, one third sort of relations. And I do have that going on, but um, a little bit with the boats, kind of they're <clears throat> at about the two third, one third <clears throat> location. But um, yeah, the tree line, not so much. I think for now it's just supporting the background. So massing in the values, not going to get really carried away with detail in those trees again because it would its background, it, the background's primary function is just to support the foreground. Anything that draws the eye, it needs to be factored in as part of the composition. So sometimes you need the background to, to do a little bit of eye catching but not much. And I'm um, kind of thinking where I might want. You can see I'm trying to lose some of that edge of that boat, that top line, because I want the eye to travel back there a little bit. Um, those little dashes I just put in the water behind the boat are suggested of other boats way out in the water. So now my thought process here is starting to put in some of the <clears throat> excuse me, darker accents under the boat, because once I get those dark values in, it starts to anchor the painting and I can kind of see where I'm going with my values, how far to push things and um, 
You know, if this is my darkest dark, then what are, what's my next medium light? I'm starting to add color now. In the beginning, I just used Gamsol to help lay in the design. Now, I, the only thing I use the Gamsol for is to clean my brush off. I do not use it for the actual painting part. So here I have used a little bit of linseed oil. That's the only medium I use to thin the paint. This colors I'm using is ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, a little bit of white, um, mostly of the blue and green variety. I'm also now adding, those boats were white, so I'm adding sort of that shadow color to the boat, which is mostly just ultramarine blue and white with a little bit of yellow ochre to neutralize it. And I'm just keeping it really simple at this point. And also, I'm painting the boats first because, like I said at the beginning, they move all over the place. <laughs> if you watch this video and fast forward, <clears throat> you'll see that they kind of float all over. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm coughing all over. All right, so I'm thinking now too about the inside of this little boat. And it's kind of like a turquoise uh, bluish color. So I am adding mostly ultramarine blue, um, a little bit of yellow ochre, and then I added some phthalo green to give it a little bit more of that turquoise look. And I like that one, especially kind of as my center of interest because, um, and it's right in the middle of those three boats. It just has that really pretty color appeal. And then this little guy is mostly titanium white, a little bit of cadmium yellow pale. It sort of helps say, it's like that intro, woohoo, look at me thing. And so I'm putting that lighter white tone. I will be adding a shadow into that boat after I get the value established. You can see I'm keeping my values really simple, light, medium, and dark. And putting that ridge on that blue boat helps to separate it a little bit. And same thing with the big white boat. That one is not as bright white as the one in front because it's further back and I want it to be less. Everything as it moves away from you is less. Of course, everything nearer to you is more, more contrast, thicker paint, um, you know, richer color, warmer. Everything further away is, um, just gets quieter. There's more atmosphere, it's cooler, less brushwork, keeping things more vague. It gives the illusion of distance. So you'll see in this case, everything on that boat gets a little less treatment than the one in front. <clears throat> okay, so I'm thinking about the water now. The water really is um, obviously just ultramarine blue and white. I add some yellow ochre into it to keep it a little bit more of that water color. Keeping my brush strokes as horizontal as possible, I do add a few vertical ones in there just to cover it. <laughs> trying to keep the integrity of the color of those reflections because when I laid those boat reflection colors down in the water, um, I was really trying to isolate it where the boats were sitting and exactly what color that was. So I don't want to mess with that too much. I think I threw in a little bit of alizarin crimson into that color for the water because there was sort of this violet undertone in the water just different than the sky. Whenever you have water in a painting, the color of the water is, even the reflections are gonna be darker than what is directly above it. So in the case of a sky, the color of blue is gonna be darker than what is in the sky, even if it's reflecting it. And the trees, boats, they're all gonna be darker. So you just have to take that into consideration. Usually a little bit greener too. So this color for the darker tone in the blues and the water that I'm painting down here is mostly just um, ult ultramarine blue, a little burnt sienna, more yellow ochre, and some alizarin crimson because I am detecting a little bit more of that violet undertone. And that's all I'm really working on in here. Same, I have on my palette just different puddles of this same mixture. I have ultramarine blue as my main pile and then into that pile I have smaller piles of paint. Some of them are a little bit more yellow ochre, some of those piles are a little bit more alizarin, and then I just mix it up as I see the colors in the water being reflected. As it gets closer to me, down here in the corner of the canvas, I saw that it was more greener, so I 
I leaned towards the yellow ochre, cadmium, yellow pale into the water. And now I'm working on that transition color of the water as it goes from shadow into highlight. And that's just sort of a neutral blue with some of the ochre in it. Thinking too about the ripples in the water and keeping my brushwork horizontal. I also don't want to get too scratchy here either, so I'm trying to lay down just clean pieces of paint. By scratchy, I mean um, like you can get kind of fussy and overwork water, but by keeping it fresh, it has more of that feel of a glassy surface. So again, just adding a little bit of white to that mixture and getting in some of that feeling of it being ripply. Um, I did go through and edit some of this to kind of clean up some of my mixing and you didn't need all that. And some of the passages in here get a little fussy so I deleted those and just to try to keep this cleaner and shorter for you. <laughs> but yeah, where the, the dark color transitions with the lighter color, I instead of blend, 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 I just take smaller brush strokes to sort of transition that passage. Water is a really fun challenge and I love uh, just trying to get out there and, and play with it and figure it out. Um, it's one of those challenges that I just, I, I love, love, love. Encourage everyone to try it. It is always different, whether you're painting a river or an ocean wave or a calm little bay like this. It's always a challenge. So just working on the background water. The problem with this passage of water is I looked out and I saw that it sure looked the same all the way across the bay, way over to the water. So my challenge before me was to try to figure out how to make that look far away and the water up close look near. So like I said before, everything nearer to you is going to have more, more color, more brush strokes. So even though the color of the water up close looked the same as the color way back there by the little tiny boats, it was my job to... Um, pull out those differences and do thicker brushwork, thicker color up close, and then let it be less farther away. So in here, I'm just hitting up the the passages where the boat reflection meets the highlight reflection in the water. I'm just kind of accenting those passages just to draw the eye right in here. In this demo, I don't get too much into the um, background detail. I don't even think I've really finished it back there. Especially since the, the key thing I really wanted to focus on in this demo was the boats and the water. So just adding a few highlights in here and um, trying to get that ripply look. The color I'm using is just mostly titanium white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. There might be some yellow ochre that was sort of on my brush, but. I don't want it to be too pasty white, so I often will add the complementary color to neutralize whatever it is I'm working on. I think that by adding the complement, it tends to keep the colors a little bit more in keeping with nature. Okay, just throwing in a little bit of... I, I did edit this video a little bit, so I, I it might appear that I'm jumping around a little... Um, refining some of the details of the boat. And then these little accents of the dark shadow where the boat meets the water really helps make those boats seem in place, in setting. It kind of anchors them to the water and I I like that, that little look there. And as you can see, if you look out at the real boats, they've kind of, they're hiding now. <laughs> so I'm going by memory and using other boats as reference in the water and that's what you have to do is, especially with plein air painting, you take that mental photograph, kind of cross your fingers and hope for the best. You can take a picture with your phone too. And I probably should have done that, but I was filming. But if you have a phone, just take a snapshot of the scene that you're working on and then go ahead and paint it plein air. But a lot of times your lighting's gonna change and having that photo reference you can just look at just real quick, it's not that you're going to use it for the painting, but you can just use it as, oh, what was the shape of that boat? <laughs> or whatever. It's helpful that way. So that black dot on the back of that big boat is the motor. 
and I'm not sure if it helps the composition or not. I may take it out on the finished product. Sometimes I take these paintings back to the studio and just kind of refine them and finish them. I might do that with this one. I, I like where those little boats are going and I'll see what I can do. So I am, I've done the, the highlighted rim around the boats and I'm going in now. I'm not going to add the little benches and other little things that I see in there because it would just be excess detail that is not necessary to for the telling of the story. And in this case, of course, what I really wanted to talk about was in this painting, this sweet little composition of boats, the feeling of water, the feeling of waiting in the sunshine and things like that. You don't have to have a story for every painting, but sometimes I do enjoy the narrative and I think it just makes the painting a little bit more interesting. So I'm working on the dock here, these big, I guess, what are they, pie lines or something? Um, I love this the color transition on these posts, how they go from sort of a chalky pine tree minty green at the top and then they fade to sort of a chalky white and then they get really dark umber at the bottom. And so I make that top green mixture with more of the yellow ochre ultramarine blue, a little bit of cadmium yellow pale and some white. And then as I go down the pole, I add more white and burnt sienna to that and then at the bottom it's mostly just burnt sienna and ultramarine blue because it's really dark working on the shadow of the dock down there um, it's just mostly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and thinking about too as i look at those docks where the shadow goes and there's that piece of highlight i'm always squinting at these things because you can look at that dock and get overwhelmed by detail but Time is of the essence whenever you're doing plein air, and so you want to find ways to speed up your process. And in this case, of course, it is, for me, I find squinting simplifies things. And having a thumbnail sketch, too, helps to simplify my thought process when I begin a painting and anything you can do to speed it up because you run out of... Um, stability basically the sky doesn't stay the same of course my boats don't stay the same so I, it's not that I overtly encourage speed but you have to do things to expedite your process a little bit of time efficiency there all right so I did jump ahead here in my video a little bit and um, just I just refined some of the little details in there that might be kind of boring to watch just fiddling around with some of those shadows and cleaning things up. Same thing back there, just adding more of the water, cleaning edges up. And uh, I just, I, it, for the sake of this video, I wanted it to be a little bit more finished. I should be switching to a bigger brush, but <laughs> happens to be what I have in my hand, so whatever. You always want to use the biggest brush you can for the job. Yeah. So, like, you know, do as I say, not as I'm doing. <laughs> oh, well. I guess I was working on smaller details. Oh, and so the, in this passage here, the water bounced up in the sides of the boat. And I think I'm going to tone these down a little bit when I get back to the studio. I think I made them a little bit too bright in this video. But what they are, I just used um, titanium white and yellow ochre and kind of just did those squiggly reflected bounced lights in the side of the boat and they need to be toned down a little in the painting they're too bright but um, there they are finished <laughs> and um, so also just right now working on a little bit of that dimensional quality inside the boat as I mentioned I was going to do earlier kind of making it feel like the, the sides of the boat go down inside it And putting in some of the green for the background just oh and I did finally switch to a bigger brush thankfully that is a size 6 bristle flat um, the colors I'm using are ultramarine blue yellow ochre a little bit of phthalo green and I'm trying to keep it cooler in tone too because it's way back there and I want to create the illusion of distance I can look at those trees when I'm standing out there and, I, and to me they look like a warmer green and I could have painted them that way, but it would have drawn the eye. And so I have to push that cooler quality. 
So just keeping it really simple, keeping my brush strokes kind of vertical to create the illusion of trees back there. And you can see on the uh, left of the canvas, it's a darker green. As I move towards the right side of the canvas, I made those trees cooler because in real life you can see that they go further away. I didn't even put any sky in this painting. I probably should have put a little pop of sky back there, but didn't. Um, and that is the shadows of the trees, which I felt helped to create a stronger background, which is just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Probably a little bit of phthalo green. And I wanted to clean up that edge where the trees meet the sand. So this is yellow ochre, titanium white, burnt sienna for the sand. A little bit of variation in there. And just, again, keeping my brush stroke the direction that I want the earth to feel like it goes in. And so just horizontal strokes. All right, well, that wraps up my video, and um, I wanted to thank you guys for joining. I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.